Welcome to the Rude Dog Show. This is Rudy Reyes. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know, I'm going to jump right into it because we have a lot to talk about. When I say we, it's not just me. It's a we conversation. Of course, when I say we, I mean Aiden Eberhardt, who is a wide receiver out of, of course, a state that I'm very familiar with, the area I'm very familiar with, and a football team I'm also very familiar with. And the Wyoming Cowboys having uh, interviewed uh, Coach Bull at press conferences. And, of course, this gentleman knows Coach Bull very, very well. Aiden, welcome to the show. Thank you for taking your time out to talk to me today. How are things down in uh, Cowboy Nation? Oh, they're doing great. Um, you know, the sun's out. And uh, thank you for having me. I uh, really appreciate all the, all the time you're giving. Oh, it's no problem. Thanks, thanks for joining me. Um, good afternoon, everybody. This is Rudy Reyes, Aiden Aberhart here. We're, we're going to kind of jump right into this because, as you've noticed, you have multiple sources uh, within the football landscape, college football landscape, specifically speaking, when you're talking about the NCAA and, you know, Pac-12, talking about how they're going to start. You look at the Mountain West. They're trying to make a push, which is a conference that you are in. Um, and, and, of course, when you look at other players like the Big Ten, uh, the ACC has already started. So it just kind of makes you wonder what type of push is really going on behind the scenes in order to help get this Mountain West football conference off to some type of start. A lot of uh, higher, you know, the, the Big Ten talk about October 23rd, and then you look at the Pac-12, they could be following suit. How far or how comfortable do you believe that there's going to be a Mountain West conference uh, season in the wings waiting for you, the, the Pokes, and obviously the West of the Mountain, uh, Mountain West Conference? Yeah, absolutely. With, uh, you know, I'm very comfortable, especially with the new news of the Big Ten um, coming and giving the go-ahead, the Pac-12 starting to make a push. Uh, you know, I think um, with all the news and the social media, everything kind of going into the, um, you know, equation of the push itself is going to – really help um help out our case and trying to get football back so like i said with uh, the big 10 i think that was a big one and then again like the pac-12 starting to uh, make their push i think that's uh just giving the mountain west every other reason to uh, go ahead and make the push as well and uh, like like i said kind of earlier on you know uh sooner rather than later would be um you know preferred yeah, you know, we, we always have a preference when we're talking about football. And, of course, Eden Eberhardt joins me here. I'm Rudy Reyes on the RudeDogShow.com. Uh, this will be posted on the RudeDogShow.com as well as on Apple Podcasts. So wherever you get your podcasts, make sure you check it out. Uh, this is Rudy Reyes on the Rude Dog Show. Uh, when, we, when we look at the season, and, of course, we can always think about what will be, what could be, what should be, and ultimately what everybody wants it to be. And when I say that, I mean to the extent of, of recognizing that the main components of all of this is testing, daily testing, weekly testing, uh, a lot of viable testing going on, especially NCAA landscape. Would it be fair to say and suggest maybe that perhaps there's going to be post-game testing along with pre-game testing in the Mountain West or maybe throughout the NCAA landscape and could apply to the Wyoming Cowboys as well? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, post game, you know, with touching and pushing off and everything like that, you know, um, the testing is very accurate from what, you know, we've heard, but uh, there could be certain different cases to where somehow it slips through um, to where I think a post test would be great. Um, just, you know, with staying at a hotel or I don't, I'm not sure how all of that would work yet, but um I think just post test, just to double, you know, triple certify everything, um, is a very viable option right now. And I think they would definitely take that into kind of the consideration while proposing, um, you know, a plan of getting football back. I think so as well. When you look at the NCAA, and of course, a lot of college football played yesterday. A lot of games, a lot of contenders, a lot of teams that you probably suspect go zero and two, two and zero. And then you switch over to the NFL where you see stadiums not filled with anybody, whereas the NCAA is a little bit more lenient in regards to capacity, uh, people actually showing up to watch their sons play. Um, when you look at the NFL landscape, I think to myself, man, is this, is this legit? Is this real playing with, without having your family, without having your friends there? 
what are you what are your thoughts about the stadium possibly there at Wyoming not having anybody or minimal amount of people to actually watch the season if that was to happen? Yeah, definitely would be very weird. You know, the, for every season I've been here, the fans have always made a huge impact on all of the games. Um, I was loud and um, saying whatever they want, which we love. Um, but, but uh, yeah, no, the fans make a huge difference in the game, whether it's momentum, even, you know, teams maybe messing up the plays while they're saying it in the huddle or hearing it differently or different things like that. There's just so much uh, little small factors uh, that, that the fans play into to where I think it definitely is a different game and teams need to be able to create their own momentum if, and energy, if that makes sense. So it'll be interesting to be able to go through like a whole game, creating your own energy, momentum and um, cheering each other on. Sure. I, I, I think so. Camaraderie is, is kind of a big thing. I mean, it, it's big in the NFL, big in team sports in general, and big in the NCAA, especially NCAA, where it's really fan-driven. Uh, they're, they're there. They attend. Uh, they, they certainly find a way uh, to, to be, the, um, to be the, uh, basically the, the cheerleaders, if you will, so to speak, figuratively and obviously uh, part of that, of that system. Uh, I, I don't know how the NCAA handles it, having a least amount of people in there as humanly possible. But the NFL does not have that. So I'm really kind of curious how, how Wyoming explicitly is going to handle that and or maybe even Utah uh, over at, and even BYU. So you have Utah, Utah State right down the street from one another. You have Wyoming all by itself, basically. Uh, then, then you have the Colorado, you have the CU Bluffs, you know, you, you have Colorado uh, that that comes in on a regular basis there in, in the Mountain West. I mean, needless to say, there's a ton of talent within the Mountain West Conference. I don't think people really give a lot of credit to, to be quite honest with you. The last solid quarterback that was uh, acquired in the NFL uh, by the Buffalo Bills was Josh Allen. Now, you know Josh, and you received balls from Josh. You were a Wildcat quarterback for Josh, which is kind of interesting uh, because Coach Bull r runs a very – very unique system there in Wyoming. I had a chance to, to interview Coach Bull on quite a few occasions during pregame uh, press conferences and things of that nature. And, 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 of course, ran into him one time. He was scouting at a high school, and he was looking at seniors who may be transferring out to Wyoming. Uh, some of them would actually stay in Colorado as well. You're from Loveland. So if there's any team that you're yeah. rooting for, it was the Broncos today, which un unfortunately have lost back-to-back -back games. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm I, I'm just I'm just saying I'd call it what it is. You know, the the Broncos yeah. always try to find a way to get it done. Well, they failed to do that miserably. It was a blown play at the end. I'm not going to go into it because again, you're you're a Broncos, yeah. and of course I understand. Um, but when Josh Allen was was nabbed by the Buffalo Bills, that seemed to be a really huge thing across. Colorado it was big you know obviously in in, in Wyoming uh, I don't know how often Josh goes back to Wyoming in the offseason when there's no NFL football to be played uh, he did lead his team uh, the Buffalo Bills to a victory today after being down so I thought that was quite interesting but again that's that's Josh Allen football that's just something that that he does tell me what it's like receiving catches and or being a part of that offensive plateau with Josh Allen as the, the obviously a starting quarterback there at Wyoming when he was in Wyoming. Yeah. So Josh, Josh was a great guy, both on and off the, off the football field. Um, he was a leader for sure. And it, it wasn't just what he said. It was also like he backed it up and his actions and everything were all there too. So it was just something that you could kind of feel um, kind of when you were around him or whatever, but uh yeah, like I said, he was a great guy both on and off the football field. And uh, I've never seen someone be able to throw a football like a baseball like he could. Um, I remember I was warming up with him for the very first time. And uh, <laughs> he ended up making me go down 80 yards. And he was just flip, you know, just kind of flicking the wrist. And it, <laughs> it was going like 80 yards. And it was just like, wow, this is, this is something else. And this is, this is something special. So, uh, 
Um, obviously, it's great to see him succeeding in the NFL because he deserves it all. And, uh, you know, I think he's starting to open a lot more eyes um, with uh, his last couple of performances, too. So that's really good to see because obviously everyone over here is always rooting for him. Yeah, and you know what really helps a whole lot is that he's winning. He has that mentality, the attitude he exhibited there while he was in Wyoming. And now that he's at the NFL level, he's really making a name for himself and continually putting Wyoming on the map to say, hey, look, don't look us over. Don't look us over. Don't, don't be that guy. Don't be that scout. Don't be that head coach. Don't be that owner. Because at the end of the day, when you look at the talent and the talent landscape throughout the Mountain West Conference, including Wyoming, uh, there's, there's a ton of talent, a ton of guys there who can do absolutely fantastic things on and off the field. And, and, and I think that it would be mm-hmm. remiss to not, you know, mention the systems these guys are playing in, that you play in. What seems to be the – and to kind of switch gears when we're talking about landscapes, we're talking about colleges within the Mountain West or in general, what is the social climate like in Wyoming right now with – you know, the Black Lives Matters movement that's going on. I had a chance to watch the, um, the, the 12, I, I believe it was, where they're showing all these, these mm-hmm. African-American players who came to Wyoming hoping uh, that they would be the ones, the starters, and that team was absolutely fantastic with them. They failed miserably without them. Um, what is the social environment like right now there in Wyoming? Yeah, so uh, I, it was the uh, thirteen. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, you know, there's a lot of different movements going on, um, here kind of through, throughout the, you know, town of Laramie itself and, um, you know, everyone's, um, coming together to make a change that is needed. Um, so I think that's really good and everyone's standing up for, um, for each other. So just like, uh, you know, the lock, just like a football locker room, um, anyone on the team, like, you know, we, we all have each other's backs no matter what. And I think that that is something that we've been able to bring out into the community as well. So I think that's been really good to see. Well, I, you know, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on right now. I mean, across the country, yeah, the NBA who's, you know, clearly on board with, with the Black Lives Matters movement to the extent of bringing awareness, wanting people to vote on a consistent basis, uh, the NFL is allowing players to put names uh, of those who've been wronged by injustices socially uh, on the back of their helmets as well. Uh, do you think the NCAA could probably do a little bit of that as well? Do you think it would be in, in, in good favor um, and, and, and a good faith movement by uh, players, uh, hopefully being able to uh, almost – give the idea that they're behind all of this, that they're w- willing participants and not only helping the vote movement, but to also uh, make other people understand that there's a social movement that really needs to happen that they want to be a part of. Yeah, I think that, uh, I think that's definitely an option. Um, you know, watching the past couple weeks of college football, I'm not sure if I've really seen um, too much of that. But I think that there could definitely be a push for, um, you know, kind of asking, asking the NCAA um, different things that can be done or, you know, what, they're, what, they, what they allow. So I think that that's, def- like you said, I think that is something that um, would be good and something that we could look for um, to, you know, help, help spread, spread the word, kind of like you said, like what the NBA has been doing and different things like that whether it's a name or phrase or words or, you know, anything that you would like to do. So I think that that's definitely a viable option um, that I really, I'm, I don't think I've seen it with it. Like I said, I don't think I've seen it within the last couple of weeks of um, football, but I do think that that is something that could come up within the next couple weeks, especially with more conferences and teams being added into the whole overall equation here. Right. I do as well. And I really hope the NCAA just kind of wakes up and smells, smells the coffee and maybe doing something a little bit more than, and, and look, don't, don't get me wrong. I understand they have a lot on their plate right now, trying to get all these conferences back on board uh, to provide all the testing, you know, to be able to make sure that players for the most part are bubbleizing themselves. If that's a new word, I guess it is, but 
uh, to really have the social distance thing down pat and to wear the mask and, 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 and to practice a lot, of, a lot of different types of things. For some are common sense, for others, you know, I, and, and you hear this all the time, I don't want to wear this dumb mask or whatever the case might be. I, I just hope the NCAA finds a way to incorporate uh, some of these injustices that have been uh, basically exhibited throughout the last few months uh, to take shape in some manner, some way, shape, or form within the NCAA landscape. Uh, let's, let's talk about you, because this is, this is about you. I think everybody needs to know a little bit more about you. And the reason why I say that is because 2018, you played in 12 games, 13 in 2019. Um, you, you've seen some daylight. I'm waiting for a breakout year from you. Now, granted, we're still in the situation, uh, and I'm serious. You're smiling. I'm dead serious. When, when, you yeah. look at, when you look at the games oh, that you yeah. played and the impact that you were part of, of those games you did play in, do you see a breakout year in your senior year of the season, granted that there is a football season, or, or do you plan on opting out? What are, what are your thoughts in regards to what you could be doing if, if there was to be a season, and how do you plan on breaking out and getting to that next level? Absolutely. So if there's a season or – if there's any games possible at all, um, I'm definitely going to be playing. You know, this is uh, – NCAA already announced that no matter what happens, if you were somehow to play only two games or if you were somehow to play 40, you know, it's it, – no matter what, it's a wash, and this year doesn't count towards eligibility. So I think uh, getting that experience, uh, getting that film is uh, – all of that is huge. And another huge thing is I think as a team – being able to play, um, this could build up momentum for what would be the next year um, once everything hopefully can go back to normal. Yeah, so I think that, that that's definitely something that, uh, that needs to be taken into consideration as well. But, um, you know, I think going back these last couple months, I mean, I guess you can throw it back till March when once we went on break. I've been working with um, – Tanner Gentry, he used to play for Wyoming. You might recognize that name. Uh, he played wide receiver there. So uh, I've been working with him down in Denver and uh, worked with him over the big old break. And then once we got here, you know, it's been um, grinding every day, lifting, running. And, you know, we've had a couple different pauses and protocols and everything. So sometimes when the weight room's not open, we, uh, me and my roommates, we've got a little – bench and squat in our uh, garage so we've been doing that we just keep on continuously going out day in and day out um and so i i hope that uh that that's going to be able to come to fruition during the season and that you'll be able to see that uh realistically i really didn't take uh, too many days off here yeah i hope so as well and i say that because when, when you look at the, the the type of readiness and a lot of nfl players could really attest to this i've interviewed quite a few of them uh, and a lot of them basically state that, look, you can get into all the off-field you want. You could talk about how you're prepared in the off-season and that you've done your cardio and that you're ready to go. The difference between, and, and I, I'm not going to use this term loosely, this is very pointed, you can be football ready. That's a different type of ready than off-season ready. And I say that because you're not yeah. used to the hits, you're not used to the contact, you're not used to having somebody jamming you you know, off the line for five, six, seven yards. You can't deal with the, with the tugs and the pulls, the real-time game, in-game scenarios and, and situations that you find yourself in when you're third and 28 or when you're third and 14. You know, you set yourself up positively for some type of points to be put on the board. So, you know, that's, that's a whole different type of ready. How do you believe it's going to yeah. – all this off-season workout will actually translate into being – football ready are you performing those types of activities uh with with the right protocols in place of course uh in order to get into a regular season where now you'll have an opportunity to get that pull that tug that jamming that jarring you know to fight on the mm -hmm. inside for the ball or jockey for position on the outside of the ball or if you're tippy toe you know to get a first down you know how do you acclimate yourself and how do you feel you're going to be football ready granted there is a season yeah. So, like I said, you know, working with uh, Tanner Gentry, they, uh, you know, following all the protocols and everything like that, uh, we would go over certain, you know, situations. And, um, you know, during a game, 
it's going to be a little different than any scenario or situation, like you said, that you can kind of put your, try to put yourself in or try to work for. But, um, you know, there are different things that you can do with uh, whether it's people trying to jam you up and making sure, you know, swiping and not swiping and different things like that, Uh, working on different releases. And um, I think a big aspect is mentally being prepared for those situations, those game-like situations. So when it does occur and you do have to get off the line, you know, for five, six, seven yards, you know, okay, I've been working on this throughout the off season. And when he does this, I can just, you know, counter him and do, you know, do whatever. So I think that uh, to answer your question, I think mentally going through those scenarios in your head and with me, you know, I've been through those games and experience and all that kind of thing. So I think that that definitely helps me to where I'm, I have an idea of what to expect going into it. And so I know um, different things that I can work on that will um, come up in the game-like situation. Sure, yeah. Situational football is a completely different monster. And it's almost nothing you can really prepare for necessarily. I mean, you can get yeah. all, the, all the A, Bs, and Cs, but it's all about the X, Ys, and Zs. You know, you can start at the beginning, yeah. but it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And so it's how you catch the ball, yeah. how you reach over, how you jam someone at the line, how can you draw away from being – double covered and opening up somebody else it's almost like an nba equivalent where you're not necessarily lebron james but you're you're trying to make other guys available so you're accepting that double team Mm -hmm. in order to free somebody else up in order to make that move those are types of sacrifices that you're going to find yourself in granted there is a mountain west uh conference opener uh or even the season for that matter so you're going to experience a lot of that um, from, from, from my side and how, how I see this season unfolding, I think it'll start as well. And I think you're going to find a lot of parity. Again, I'm, I'm wishfully thinking, I'm hopefully thinking I'm being realistic at the same token. Because if you're going to follow suit with the NFL, if you're going to follow suit with the NBA by bubbleizing players, by testing, uh, by putting on, some of them may have electronic devices to let them know that, look, you know, there's a player in trouble you know, his temperature's to the roof right now, his pulse is high, things of that nature. Um, those are the people that, you know, you, you want to uh, get to first to try to help solve for whatever situation uh, that, that may occur. So when you look at players who are practicing the social distancing and the mass scoring, things of that nature, is that, do you believe that that, that could clearly uh, help? I mean, it has shown to help to, to some extent, but is this going to be an on-field situation where you're going to put your mask on the minute you get over to the sidelines or based on testing based on a comfort level that you may not feel the need to wear one yeah i think uh most importantly it'll come down to to the mountain west and their you know rules or regulations and if they you know there's a chance that they could say you know right when right when you take your helmet off you have to put your mask up right away and so, obviously, we're going to have to adhere to all of the rules and regulations that, the, that come into place and whatever they say. Um, this is, like you said, wishfully thinking and hoping that we do have a season. Um, and then I think another big thing to always think about, too, is um, the coaches and their families. Um, just because the, a lot of research has came out saying that, you know, us – Players might not be affected. Um, you know, there's still there still is a chance that we could be affected, but um, mo- more so, it, it would probably be the coaches or the equipment staff or um, different you know, player personnel, personnel, uh, different things like that. So, I think that uh, all of that kind of goes and factors into at the end of the day what your decision is going to be on if you wear a mask, don't wear a mask. Um, Overall, I think that uh, adhering to Mountain West Conference uh, protocols is going to be the the number one um, driving factor on what to do or what not to do with all that. Right. No, I, and and I couldn't agree with you more because you have a lot of similar protocols, which I'm sure the NCAA is going to try to mandate across the board being the same type of rules. It doesn't matter what team you're on. Doesn't matter how many catches or receiving yards or out of the backfield or how many blocks or how many tackles for life. None of that's going to matter. What's going to matter is, is your safety. 
And so if the NCAA yeah. is putting these rules and regulations and sticking them to, let's just say Wyoming as an example, you guys are going to follow that to the letter. And I can guarantee you Coach Bull is going to have a, a, enough to say a, about it to a point where he's going to get his point across to you one way or another. That's just Coach Bull's style. Uh, and I have nothing mm-hmm. but the utmost respect uh, for Coach Bull uh, and, and that program that he has turned around uh, with, with, with his tenure while being the head coach for the Wyoming uh, football team. Uh, last, last but not least, Aiden, when, when I look at the upcoming season and I think to myself, and again, I'm going to cross my fingers and I'm going to, you know, do some seven Hail Marys or whatever, you know, like <laughs> rabbits, yeah. the garbage yeah. on the, you know, neck or whatever it might be. <laughs> I, I always find myself being, yeah. being wishfully, you know, hoping and, and crossing fingers that there will be a season. Um, I think there will be. The bigger question is, is whether or not um, Wyoming will actually take part in it. Because, again, from the beginning it was, you know, teams opting out, players opting out. Is opting out even an option for you at this point headed into a would-be senior season? Uh, personally, no. I'm not thinking about opting out at all. Um, you know, like I said earlier, if – we have any games possible that we're going to be playing. I'm going to be playing in them uh, no matter what. So uh, personally, uh, I've not thought about opting out at all. Okay. Well, we're definitely on the right page. Again, this could be a breakout season for you. I can almost, I can almost smell it literally. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You know, it, it, it is a cowboy town. It is a cowboy nation out there between Laramie and Cheyenne. I know that landscape very, very well, working in television as a sports reporter there. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Aiden Everhart joins me here on the Rude Dog Show. I'm Rudy Reyes. Um, Aiden, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate your time. I know it's not a whole lot going on around there, but your family isn't very <laughs> far away. Uh, do you make plans on, on seeing them or have seen them or vice versa? Do they come to see you at any point? Or how is that, how is that situation going for you right now? Yeah, so with the rules and protocols and everything, uh, it's really – it's probably not the best idea to drive down there um, just because it's the whole state line thing is what they really look at and who all you're around. So crossing the state line really isn't probably the best idea at this point just because um, that could be a possible quarantine, which would then, you know, if we – wishful thinking, if we do end up having a season here soon, um, you know, that would kind of put that in, in jeopardy a little bit. So, you know, I've been, I, I talk to my family, I'm a huge family guy. So I talk to my family all the time, every single day. Um, I've called both my mom and my dad today already. So, um, you know, I stay in touch with them and then I've got my three little sisters. Um, one plays basketball at CSU. So I really don't like to talk, talk about that a whole lot, but <laughs> I, uh, I no, I, I talk to her all the time and we, we all stay in communication. So it's been really nice to, to stay in contact with all of them and keep up to date with all of their stuff and how they're doing. So that's been, that's been good. Yeah, no, it definitely it helps to have an outlet. It really helps to be able to keep in contact with family, you know, friends, people that uh, are really crossing their fingers too, hoping not only are they able to attend to watch you play, but that, but in, in the fact alone that there will be a season in the Mountain West. Uh, Aiden, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. I, again, I know a whole lot is not going on right about now, but that could very well change with the next report uh, coming from the NCAA and the next, the next big conference, I, I think that will probably open up a lot sooner or later is the Pac-12, um, which is kind of, it, it's near and dear to me because I grew up being, being a Pac-12 fan, uh, but I'm also a Mountain West guy. Yeah because I did cover Mountain West sports. So being there, uh, being able to you know, talk to players and interview guys and uh, just do all of that, you know, uh, Laramie, Wyoming will always have a special place in my heart regardless. Um, and I, and I, I wish you explicitly the absolute best uh, this upcoming would be potential, probable, gosh, I don't even know where to end with that, but a football season there. Yeah. <laughs> well thank you very much I, I appreciate it all i appreciate the time and uh thanks for having me absolutely thanks a lot aiden
Aiden Everhart here joins me on the Rude Dog Show. Thank you so much, Aiden. I really appreciate your time. And uh, stay tuned. This will be on the RudeDogShow.com. I'll have it uploaded to SoundCloud. You'll be able to listen to the podcast soon as well. Thanks for tuning in. This is Rudy Reyes on the Rude Dog Show, joined by Aiden Everhart, wide receiver for the Wyoming Cowboys. Go Pokes.